Can you just give us a prognosis on Jack Broadbent, first of all, please? Um, X-rays were came back clear. I think he's gone for a scan just to see what damage is in there. The X-ray was, was fine, but I know there's got to be obviously a little bit more investigation. So he's still pretty sore. So I'm not 100% sure on, you know, the damage in there, but, it, you know, it won't be in this week, but hopefully not too, not as bad as we first feared when it went off. So, yeah, which takes a bit of stick for, because when you go off like that, you, you want it to be injured and the lads have given it him this week for just having a bruised shoulder. But we'll wait and see what the scan says. What about Nathan Massey? Did he pick up a knock last week? Yeah, yeah, his knee. Um I think he just came on, did a couple of carries and, and got injured, unfortunately. So it's, again, not as bad as, as first feared, which is which is great news for Mass. But we'll just see see how it settles down. Obviously, the first couple of weeks are really important in terms of treating it and, and letting it settle. And, and hopefully, you know, we'd love to see them two back before the end of the season. Who uh, do these absentees sort of leave the door open for this week then? Um, there's a few... Opportunities, you know, for people who just missed out last week, really in the twenty-one. You know, people like you know um, Billy, uh, Sam Hall, um, Alex Meller, all you know disappointed because we didn't play. Will Tate, all disappointed who were in the twenty-one that, that weren't selected last week. So it's been an it's been an opportunity for them to to put the hand up. They all trade even when they weren't selected last week. They all they all reacted really well, which is what we wanted. You know, yes, there was. We're disappointed, but they trained really well. So it's, it's selection headaches for me as a coach, which is what we want. Although we've lost two, two of, um, big hitters there, you know, there's other lads knocking down the door to, to come play a part as well. So that, that's what we want as, as coaching staff. Something I noticed last week, Danny, I meant to, to bring up after the game, but forgot. You came out very early for the second half. You left the players in the, the dressing room for quite some time. Was that a conscious thing or did you did you lose track of time? Uh, no, no timekeeping is normally bang on, and Mrs. might tell you otherwise. But um, that was just some some of them moments at half time. You don't need to say too much. You go in, and I say you put as a coach, you put in the work during the week, and then sometimes game days. You know the your leaders are talking well. You don't have to send message many messages on during the game, and you know came in the boys were just taking a few minutes to get the breath, and then. You know the the leaders was were standing up and speaking and and delivering pretty much similar message that that I was going to say anyway. So it's you get a few little points across and then and then leave them to it. You know it's them boys who are who are going out. I'm not you know one for they didn't need the big um, any given Sunday speeches at half time or you know, at the weekend. They, they, you're doing that themselves as as players. So you best just leaving them alone. It can be too much of a too overkill really sometimes giving them too many messages and you know luckily second half they went out and performed well just on the player front obviously the club have announced the the uh, forthcoming departures of Niall and Niall Evels and Jordan Turner behind the scenes what's the balance like with you in terms of retention and recruitment and sort of overseeing this this period um yeah, not. I'm been just fully concentrated on the games at the minute you know because I, mean, I I speak to speak to Danny and Mark quite a bit, but at the same time, I know it's hard for them to plan in the situation they're in, but leaving them to, to get on with, with the planning. And a lot of that, you know, is um, recruitment, retention, you know, them decisions have been been made before I came in. So I'm just fully focused on, on, on preparing the team for the weekend, really. You know, yes, I'll give advice and, and thoughts on, on certain things, but, you know, for, for me just coming in now, it's all just taking that game that's in front of us. Five games left. Your penultimate home game this Friday. How significant do you feel this one is in particular? Uh, yeah, every game's every game's massive. You know, Wakey was a massive game last week, and now we're on to this one, and it's that one that's ahead of you. That's that's the biggest game. So I'm really looking forward to to coming back home after after a good win at the weekend. We know we just got to focus on performance and and back up a good victory with 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 another solid performance. We can't let standard slips. We can't get excited or ahead of ourselves of, of where we're at and what's coming with you know we've got what better game than you know the champions coming down here do you know where we where you know you're gonna have to be on your money all across the field everyone's gonna have to turn up and be be the best for us to to compete with you know one of the best teams in the comp um so that that's all the main focus has been this week how special will that be for you on friday your first home game in charge 
I can't wait, yeah. I can't wait. Everyone, again, straight after the game, Friday, everyone's just buzzing and talking about getting back to the jungle this week and, and playing in front of the fans who were, who were immense at, at the weekend. So, it, yeah, I remember, I said, I've come here as a, as a player on the opposition, um, coach on the opposition side. I played for, you know, Castro. I know what, you know, this means to, to the supporters. I know the energy that they're going to bring and, and hopefully I can't wait to, to get out and, and sit and experience that again as a coach this week. Did I read somewhere that you'd move back in with your mum and dad? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How's, how's that going? All right, yeah. Did you bring uh, your washing with you? It's going well, yeah. Fish fingers, chips and beans on a Monday. Chicken nuggets, chips and beans on Tuesday. Crispy pancakes, Wednesday. It's just like being a kid again. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Well, it's, it's down the road. It's back in Dewsbury, you know, back in familiar surroundings. My mum and dad's, you know, fantastic. So we just went and, and I said, as soon as I got this job, you know, do you want to lodge her for for six weeks and and yeah it was a nice short term fix um not discussed any board at this minute I keep dodging keep dodging my dad when he's when he's strolling around you know like tapping me up so I just keep pretending to be on the phone and stuff like that so I'm just laying low on that front at the minute but it, yeah it's been again great easy easy to jump back in there and um like not too far away back in Jews but not too far away from Cass on the morning. Just lastly from me talking of turning the clock back what did you get in your GCSEs? I didn't do too bad actually, surprisingly. I, I, I got um what did I get? I got a double scene science. Um you're looking to really surprise like that. So you're looking shocked. No, no. I got a B in English literature, B in geography, C in maths, and a, a C in English language, yeah. B in English literature is really good. Oh yeah, oh, well, yeah. Oh, were well, all your tip sheets spelt right? That's it. it was it was Kestrel for a knave, you know, absolute classic of a book we, we did for his GCSEs. It was still got it on my bookshelf now at home. So um, yeah, it was a surprise. A few people got an F in design and technology, which probably explains a lot of my DIY that's around the home as well. That's absolutely shoddy. That's not improved since me F there, but I don't talk about that. And me E in German as well, but. We don't talk about them ones. We just celebrate the wins. As has been mentioned, now now level's departure has been confirmed. What what are the chances of him playing again this year and getting a proper send off? Um, I'm still hopeful. I think Niall is. You know, it's been a, been a tough year for him injury wise. Uh, we're not totally ruled out him playing again at the end of the year, but it's a it's obviously a big ask at the same time. So we just take him one week at a time with his recovery. You know, there's no there's no pressure on. On Niall to to get back out on the field and do that, you know, it's um, we're okay for bodies at the minute. If but always good to to have a send off in if you if you're moving on and, and someone of, of Niall's character as well, it'd be great. But we'll just take that one week at a time. If he is fit, you know, and can put his hand up, fair enough. If if not, then you know that's unfortunate. Yeah, you might have answered my next question just then. But any thoughts about bringing the guys out uh, back who are out on loan, or are you comfortable with what you got? At the minute, comfortable with what we've got. Again, it's, it's week by week. That can soon change in in by in eighty minutes, and and we don't know where we're at. But at the minute, you know, that I'm really happy with the lads and and fitness wise. You know, the medical team's doing a fantastic job. Getting it is tough at this time of year with with bodies creaking, but you know they're doing an amazing job. The lads are looking after themselves. So I'm really happy with where we're at at the minute. But yeah, never rule anything out. Yeah, uh, is this week about avoiding it uh, after the Lords? May show type of performance after such a, a big win last week. Um, yeah, yeah, we've just spoke about consistency. We we need that. We've not had that all year, and and yeah, it was a good performance. Um, lots of areas we needed to fix up after the weekend, and we got, we got straight back on that on Saturday morning. And in review, you know, highlighting some areas where we needed to be better, where we got exposed, and. We're talking about just performing, especially at home, especially in front of his fans. You know, we we owe it to ourselves and and to them to to back it up with a good performance this week against you know a very good Saints side. So that's all been the focus is consistency. Yeah, it seems like you've been a breath breath of fresh air since you come in. Have you made a conscious effort to set the pressure off having been in this situation before? Um, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. It's just about getting the boys confident. You know, we had a fantastic week of training last week, and it was important. We didn't speak about it much, but to get the win was was immense, you know, to to keep that confidence rolling, to keep that buzz about us. Um, but then now comes the balance of getting them back down to earth and, and you know, saying, well, look, we, we had that result at the weekend because of the hard work we put in during the week. And 
and the intensity that they were brought to training and buzz we had about this place. We can't, you know, sit back on that and and, and pat ourselves on the back too much. It's, it's back to square one on Monday when we were back training. Yeah, is your experience with London helping you? I definitely think so. Yeah, my experience in, in in you reach to reaching all them experiences as a player, as a as a coach at different levels, and and certainly I think yeah the experiences I had at London in in similar situations in in nineteen I can definitely draw on them and and, and see the areas that we we could have and should have done differently and the areas were successful. Yeah, you beat Saints twice with London, didn't you, in 2019? Um, although they did rest a few in, in both games, is that evidence that you can turn the table on its head in, in games like this? Definitely, yeah. You know, they're a very good side. Everyone can see the quality that they've got uh, through the squad, even if, you know, whoever's out there, the squad's fantastic. But on any given day, Super League showed that this year. I think that anyone can beat anyone on the day. You know, you, you see Wakefield turn Wigan over the other week at home and... And that's the quality of the competition at the minute. So we can't worry too much about St. Helens and what they're going to bring. Again, it's all been about us and, and being consistent and working hard and fixing them bits up from last week. But we, yeah, we definitely know that that we've got it in us. I can see you as a bit of a, a Brian Glover type. Did um did oh, type, sorry. Brian Glover. Oh yeah. Yeah, did that uh, that influence your his uh, PE style? Teach it, influence your coaching, did it? Hey, take influence from everywhere, don't you? It's that, it's that. <laughs> it was his first um, idol as a as a coach growing up. Yeah, playing playing uh, in all the games in training and making your own rules up as you go. Definitely a bit of a bit of Kez in all of us. Yeah. <laughs> what's um? What's your dad had to say about you taking over uh, Cass? Is he very sportive? Yeah, of course. Yeah, he was, he was made up to to see me back um, back coaching and just yeah, I mean. Parents are just happy as long as the kids are happy. So he just saw saw how, how made up I was, and and yeah, it's just it's great for him to see his see his back in. Yeah, have you begin been um giving any drop goal practice in in training? I don't want to embarrass the halves really. It's uh keep that one keep that one in my locker for a few more weeks, and I don't know if the the hips and knees can can do that many many more times. But uh, yeah, hopefully we won't be needing we won't be needing many. But you never know. I might I might surprise a few. That's still one of my favourite Super League moments. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy how, how talked about that still is when people, that's the really only thing that people remember for is, is dropping a goal. But I take that because there's not many not many props that have done it. Yeah. Um, just a quick one, just thinking back to Friday, how satisfying was it for you to get that win, your first game back in Super League, on the same ground that you actually, you know, had such a disappointing loss in your last game in Super League in... 2019. Yeah, uh, certainly exercised a few demons. I think going to Wakefield. Wakefield's a really tough place to go, and and as a player and a coach, you know it's been been tough going there. And and yeah, we spoke about last week about me going there as a player with Cassie in 06 and last game of the season I was with London on 19. So yeah, third time lucky. I think it was. But it could have been anywhere. I'm not bothered where we'd have been playing um, at the weekend, as long as we got the victory. Which, but yeah, well, it it was pretty special after after some tough times in the past. There. Did you ever think to yourself, you know, when when that game ended four years ago, that it would be four years, it would be four years before you got back into Super League? Because you know, most people, me included, would have expected you to either bring London Broncos back into Super League at the following year, or be at another Super League club, you know, given what you did in 2019, which was actually hugely impressive to, um, to you know, to very nearly avoid relegation that year. Yeah, it's a bit crazy to think, you know, leaving leaving that game that it'd be such a long time. But, you know, it well got tipped on its head, didn't it, shortly after with COVID and things like that. And it was... Uh, was a bit of a crazy time all in all, but yeah, I never thought probably leaving there before years. But just yeah, glad to be back. It it is what it is. It's it's it was just great to be back amongst it and, and coaching at top level back at the weekend. Do you actually feel better qualified now than you did back then? Certainly, yeah, I, I think so. I, like I say I'm four years older. I've been um, I've still been coaching in that time. Where I say I had a couple more years at London. Um, I had to go through all the COVID. Um, Obviously, all, all the pandemic, which was hard for in the championship when that got cancelled, and and you're learning bits about how trying to trying to manage a squad, trying to trying to deal with groups of players, and 
and just blokes really in a, in a tough time for 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 everyone in that period. So and then since then, you know, been coaching at, at different levels, union as well, picking up different things. So I've, yeah, four years I've been I've been busy trying to um, better myself in in lots of aspects. And can I just ask about your style, Danny? Because the thing that was apparent to me or, or looked apparent to me on Friday night when the team came out, it looked as though you'd lightened the atmosphere a bit. You know, the they, previous games, the, the cast of the players had look, looked, you know, pretty heavy as though, you know, the world was on the shoulders sort of thing. But they seemed to come out on Friday and play with a lot more freedom and, you know, abandon, so to speak. You know, they didn't seem to be carrying an enormous weight on the shoulders. I, I, did you go out deliberately to try and lighten that sort of feeling about the, the, the club? Yeah, I, th I think probably that was, there's a little bit of it in there. Do you know, um, people know my character. Uh, I like players to play with a smile on face. I like them to enjoy themselves. But at the same time, anyone who's worked with me knows that when, when we're on, we're on. And whether that's crossing the crossing the whitewash on training or going into the gym or into a meeting, you know, when when we're on, we, it's time to work hard. And and that's what we just tried instilling into the lads last week that, you know, we, we you know, it's a little bit of intensity in training. But off, once we're off the field, you know, we want them to to enjoy each other's company and, and try and take a little bit of that pressure off them. It's been a tough year for the boys. We tweaked a couple of bits with the other members of the coaching staff last week um, in, in rugby, which, you know, I think, you know, freed them up and give them a nice, simple game plan to follow. And, you know, to be fair to them, they execute it really well. So a lot of the credit is, you know, to the boys there. You enjoy yourself, you know, when you're working hard with each other. And can I just ask about one player in particular, young Shabel Tassipali, who we've spoken to a bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, our reporter made him the man of the match on Friday. I don't know whether you agreed with that, but he certainly had a pretty impressive game and and scored a try. You know, it must be good for you as a coach when a, a guy comes in who perhaps most of us obviously didn't know very much about at all, but then probably plays perhaps better than most people would have expected, you know, looking from the outside. That you know that you it, it, it's uh, it's great for you as a coach when players come in and can do that and can add add to the club. Yeah, I think he probably was a bit of an unknown going in. You know, people didn't know too much about him. That's the first time I've managed to see him. You know, playing live as well. I'm, I'm really impressed. He was good in training all last week, and yeah, I thought yeah, I thought he had a very good game at the weekend. You know, had a, had a lots on an edge. He's a big boy as well. You know, so he's, he's it was hard to handle. I thought he started the game for us. Fantastic. So yeah, that's what we want. We want people to really put their hand up and and put in some strong performances. And and he was certainly one of them at the weekend. They're very pleasing. Seems to have a pretty positive mindset as well from having just spoken to him, or at least it gives that impression anyway. Yeah, he, he does. He, he again just seems it seems to have a smile on his face. Really enjoys his rugby. Enjoys training. It looks like he's loving being here. Amongst the lads, like I think I said last week, these these new boys who've just come in, they look like they've been here all year, if not two years. Um, it goes to with the team spirit of, of the boys um, that they've fitted in so well. So it can be tough going to a different country and playing with a new team, and and these have just slotted in really, really well, and and they're sticking their hand up and working hard for the team. And in terms of the league table, finally, Danny, um, you're in the driving seat now in 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 relation to. Super League survival, um, and you'd be, you know, even more so if you can get a win over St. Helens. And uh, I mean, the, you know, the Tigers have had some notable wins over St. Helens in in in, in recent years. Um, hopefully, this might be one of them from your point of view. Hopefully, yeah, that's what we go out every week with that with that mindset and that that plan to you know perform and and hopefully get wins in games. Um, you know, league table wise, you know, we can't look at it. We're just We've just got to focus on our cliches again. We've got to focus on one game at a time, and that's the one ahead of us. We can't be looking at, at what other teams are doing or who's playing who or who's up next. We say Scott, we've just got to fully focus on, on Saints this week. And I think that's that's the beauty of being at home as well against, you know, the Super League champs, the world champs. If we can't get on for this and focus on this one and, and be looking elsewhere, then then we then we're in trouble. Um obviously with the result on Friday, is there a danger of you getting too far ahead of yourselves and thinking that you know it's all sorted now and like relegations out the window or yeah. Of course there is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the messages, you know, whenever we spoke before the game and I said I said mine and uh Mark Applegaff's 
messages would have been the same when people are building it up as a as a must win and we'd have both said the same if we'd have lost or won on Friday night. There's five games left. It, it means absolutely nothing in the scheme of things if we don't continue performing and getting better. You know, it, it, it's all it's all just focused on being being better each week and, and that is the that is a challenge for us is to keep us grounded and not it wasn't the be all and end all at the week uh, at the weekend it, it wasn't at all and we knew that going in so that's the main focus we can't get carried away as we've said many a time so hopefully the boys know that message we've been working hard this week in training again and it, again we enjoyed it at the weekend it, it was great soaked up that atmosphere and you've got to enjoy their moments you know, come Saturday morning when we're back in for a review and Monday morning when we're on the field, you know, it's back to business. It's gone. It, it, there's no point, you know, um, patting ourselves on the back anymore.